thought you were going to fix that compost today. I swear I've had my jumper on and off and on and off today. The weather cannot make up its mind. I'm not going to complain, I've got a flash of sunshine though. So, one of the other things on this big journey, one of the other things I've learned is my own laziness. So you guys know that I was struggling, that my compost was always absolutely sodden, saturated, wet, unusable, disgusting, stinky, okay? And it shouldn't be like that. No compost should ever be like that. That's not what you're after. So what I've done, I've went on this journey and I've learned about making sure I'm using the right amount of brown, the right amount of green, that kind of thing. But to stop me being lazy about it, I've set this system up here. It's a bit much for most people, but it works for me. So I've got a big box of all my bark chippings. I've got two boxes that have usually got shredded paper in them and my bucket. And what I do is, if it's only a small amount, I can do it a handful straight into the bin. If it's a big amount, like today, I've got grass clippings, then I just mix it in this bucket. And I find it actually makes life easier. And this does a couple of things. It's easier, it makes it easier for me to then get it all mixed and tip it in rather than try to mix in the bin. But also I can see what the quantities are and how it feels. And I can decide if it needs more or less of anything. <laughs> Some of you have seen me with this, which is quite a brutal beastie. This is designed for normal compost piles so that you can get right down to the bottom and lift it proper all the way from the bottom. You don't want to be doing that in a hot compost bin if it's running properly because the stuff underneath is further composted than the stuff on top. So you don't want to mix it the wrong way. And also the stuff down below is actually cool or cooler than on top. So again, you don't want to mix that. But the reason I've got this is because the problems I was having, the bin was getting so sodden wet and so compacted, I just couldn't get it turned and aerated with this while I was trying to get on top of things. I needed this. So I went with this because at that point things were so bad I had to get it turned over and mixed and basically start getting that pile on track. I don't always use this, but I don't, if it's working, I don't go all the way to the bottom to mix it. That was just to fix problems I was having okay so now if I use this it's just really to get things mixed up on the top layers so just to warn you so here we go we can see it's currently sitting at about is that fifth well just under 55 let's say 52 and a half centigrade um and it's not had a big feed um it's getting little handfuls of kitchen waste as you can see depending on who does it, is how chopped up it gets, say nothing. Um, and you can see that I'm trying my best to make sure I've got the right amount of brown, which is paper and sort of twigs and all that kind of stuff. So we've got the compost in the bin and it's the focus on getting the correct amounts of brown and green and keeping the moisture in check and all that kind of thing. Emptying the bin, and then this is the next thing I do, because, right, I'm gonna sit down for this. So this video, I want to talk specifically about the actual compost you get out of the bin. So I'll take you through my process start to finish, but I want to talk about this. The last couple of years using this, I've complained that the compost is always absolutely sodden wet and basically unusable for anything except digging into a bed, like right into the bottom of the bed. Um, I now know a bit more about things and I've managed to level off my amount. So you knew I struggled with getting the right amount of brown in there because we're a paperless household. I now have the most amazing neighbour who's given us all their newspapers and their kitchen waste to put in the bin and it has made such a difference. So I am now getting this bin consistently between 50 and 60 degrees consistently and um, if I put grass in it will spike for a few days and it will go crazy but that's not consistent so that's the first thing I want to say it is not going to sit at 60 to 100 degrees all of the time all year okay it just doesn't happen but 
when I'm putting the stuff in fresh and feeding it, it does do those temperatures. So between the 50 and 60, it will sit quite happily throughout spring, summer like that. Um, I haven't got into autumn, winter with this amount of food yet, so I can't talk about that. Um, so I'm happy with that because it is doing that big, fast chug of stuff. Um, the next thing, because we've now got paper coming in and I've got more of a balance, I'm seeing that the compost coming out is not quite as wet. Now, I'm going to show you the compost so you can see, but with the caveat, I took this bin out a couple of days ago because this is my next process. I take it out and I put it on a tarpaulin and I dry it. Okay, And the reason for this is, as you can see, it's quite lumpy when it comes out and you need to dry it so that you can sieve it to turn it into the nice fine stuff for say pots in the greenhouse and stuff. Let me get this straight. You buy compost from your local garden center or whatever in the big bags and it's pot and compost and it's super dry and it's super fine, okay? That's not actually compost. That's compost that has been treated to make it like that. And by treated, I mean it's been sieved down different levels, okay? So that's the first thing. So here we go. This is what it's actually like when it comes out the bin, okay? And this is normal, okay? This is when you do your own compost in the garden. It's full of bits, so there's roots and bits of twig and stick and stuff that haven't broken down, okay? That's the bark that you get, the kind of bulking agent, they call it. There's bits of paper that haven't broken down. And you guys know I've mentioned it before, eggshells don't break down first time, no matter how finely you break them up. Okay, and that's just normal. You have to put them back in a few times. Real compost that you make in the garden is lumpy, okay? And what you can also see is it's wet, okay? Not sodden wet. This is wetter than it was, to be honest, because it's chucked it down with rain. And as much as I tried to keep the rain getting in, it didn't manage. But you can see when you press it, it clumps together, okay? Because it's wet, but it breaks up again easily, okay? So it's not like clay wet, just, I don't know, if I say it's just like good mud, okay? It's good, it's black mud. That colour, that jet black, means it's really nutritious and it's going to do your garden really well, okay? Now, how do we get from this to the stuff you buy in the garden centres that you put up in the greenhouse with? Simply by sieving. Sieve, okay? I reckon most of you guys have got one of these. This is a bog standard garden compost sieve, okay? It's a good size for these kind of buckets that we all have. It's a really good size for that. And you just hold it over, you put your compost in and you give it a shake and all your lovely filtered stuff comes out the bottom, okay? Now, reality is, if I try and sieve this through this little sieve, it will take forever because this is still really big and clumpy. And again, if it's wet, it will just clog it up. So here is my sieve that I use for the first pass. Are you ready? They're a wee bit different, okay? So apart from the obvious, it is much, much bigger because if I'm doing large amounts, then I kind of need that. This is great if you're just trying to reuse some compost from a pot. But when you're wanting to do this amount and on a regular basis, it just takes ages. So this chap is where that comes in. Now this is homemade, okay? But the main thing you'll see, or you might not see because I might be too far away, this is much coarser, okay? So I can actually put my fingers through the holes in here just, okay? This I can't do, this is a much finer sieve, okay? The reason being, this is the first pass I do and it takes out the really big stuff like the bits of stick and all that kind of stuff that are gonna go back into the compost bin because they're not finished. And it leaves me with the kind of sieve, kind of fine bits and bobs left. Then with that that's left, I then put it through this sieve to get it super fine if I want to use it in pots and things in the greenhouse. If it's just to go into the garden, so if I'm digging it into beds or digging it over uh, the raised beds, that bit of the garden, I just go with what comes out of this because it's good compost. You don't need it to be super fine for the outdoors garden bit. You only need that for if you're doing potting on in the greenhouse, okay? Um, so that is the massive sieve. So at the minute, I just have to leave this out in the sun for a wee bit and then I can get it sieved. But if it's weather like just now and I can't get a few good days of good dry sunny weather, I'm not going to get this dry and sieved. So what do I do then? <sighs> so 
whole different day, whole different outfit from those of you that are now really confused. Um, I spoke in the last video about the weather and how it was sunny, it was cloudy, it was rainy, it was sunny, it was... And pff. so basically, this is the joys of trying to dry a compost in Scotland. So this is it then, this is the last bit. And basically, if I've been lucky enough to get it dried and filtered, but I don't need to use it straight away, I bag it up. If I've not been lucky enough and I haven't got it all filtered yet, I can bag it up when I can't get it out to get it dried. So essentially bagging it up is something I do a lot. Um, and essentially I can put it in a bag and I can shove it behind the shed or in the greenhouse, whatever I want to do, to store it until I need to use it. Because in a small garden like this, I don't need compost all the time. So there are certain times of the year when it's really useful. And this way I have my supply. So bags then. You can see this mad white bag. It is absolutely fine. You can put your compost in a black bin bag if that suits you. The only thing I would say though is make sure it's a really strong, durable one, like a rubble sack, um, because they do tear really easily if you just use the normal household ones. And you don't want to lose all that lovely, gorgeous compost. Um, these are just kind of woven bags, so they're still a kind of plasticky, nylon-y material, um, but they're woven. So they let a little bit of air pass, so that way my compost doesn't get all minging and smelly and icky in there because if it's sitting in a black bag for months at a time you can imagine how icky it can get but I didn't get this dried um, and didn't get it sieved so I'm putting it back out again that's my job for today so in this incredibly exciting um, finale to the video because I know you're on the edge of your seats now um, it's possibly a good time to do the usual and say really exciting compost videos. If you like it, give it the usual thumbs up. If you don't want to miss out on any of this excitement, remember that little subscribe button and that little bell. And, oh, this is harder work than it needs to be. 